men of Galilee, Why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Hey guys. Hi. We want to welcome you to another one of our videos. We're here and we're going to, Susie's got a great message actually. And I think without any further delay, we're just going to dive right in there. Well, praise God. Hallelujah. I always love to, to read and tell about God's word. And while we're at it today, I just wanted to thank whoever sent me this beautiful new Thompson chain reference Bible. I really appreciate it. It really blessed me. <laughs> it's long overdue for the thanks. We <laughs> I'm sorry. We got this some months back and I've been, I've been reading it quite a bit. Yeah. We <laughs> <laughs> God's good. <laughs> we Amen. told a, I told a story a while back of how God put it in my heart to give someone my brand new Thompson chain reference Bible years ago. And then one of our viewers yeah, I uh, decided to bless us me Amen. with this. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Bless my wife. Amen. Yeah. I really appreciate it. Thank you for yeah. being led by the Spirit. Thank you. Thank you for your love and prayer. Yes. Uh, Amen. Amen. Well, today I just want to talk about um, a lot of us have been praying for our families yeah. and for our family's salvation. And sometimes uh, we get discouraged yeah. and because it doesn't look like anything's happening. In fact, sometimes they go from bad to worse <laughs> before they get better. You oh, know? yeah, strife in the family. <laughs> so I just want to uh, share with you out of the Bible. I, I, there are several stories about how God... <laughs> saved a whole family because one person believed, you yeah. know, and so I want to share one from the Old Testament today about Joseph. And if, you, if this, I'm not going to read the whole passage to you. So when you go back later and study your Bible, I'd want to encourage you to read this, though. It's found in Genesis chapter 37 and then chapters 39 through 50 tells the entire story. Oh, yeah. I just wanted to share, um, Joseph was next to the youngest son of Jacob, who later was renamed Israel. And he had, they, he had 12, uh, well, there was 12 of them in all, 12 brothers in all. So he had 11 brothers besides himself. And... Uh, Joseph, because he was next to the youngest and he was the child of his father's old age, um, he had great favor with his father. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and I believe he was also very obedient to his father and um, tried to do everything his father asked him to do. But his brothers um, were very jealous of Joseph. And his his dad would give him special gifts and stuff. Oh, yeah. And like, for instance, he gave Joseph this beautiful multicolored coat. Yeah. That was probably quite expensive and quite rare. And um, anyway, he was obviously his father's pride and joy. Yeah. And um, anyway, he had Joseph had a dream one night and he was all excited because he knew his dream was from God and he got all excited, just like we do sometimes. Oh, yeah. And unfortunately um, his brothers got even madder when they heard the dream. And uh, he, the dream was they were out in the field shucking wheat and they would put it in sheaves and all of his brother's sheaves bowed down to Joseph's. So I can see why the brothers, they got madder than oh, ever yeah. at him. And so what, are we all going to bow down to you? What are you talking about, man? And, and then he had another dream. And the next dream he had was pretty similar. 
he he dreamed that of the stars in the sky, all of them bowed down to him. <laughs> and, you know, there was 12 of them. I mean, you know, it was real obvious, you know, they bowed down to Joseph. And he even told his father and his father even got on to him for that one. He said, what do you, because I guess the number included uh, Jacob and, and Leah, who was, um, who was Joseph's stepmother, you know, cause his mother had passed away, yeah. but he said, what is your mother, your mother and your brothers and I all going to bow to you. He kind of rebuked them, you know, but Joseph was like, Many of us, especially when we're young in the Lord, you know, we get yeah. all excited about something God shows us. And sometimes we do make people oh, mad yeah. at us yeah. and jealous, you know. But anyway, um, his brothers were out, uh, had their had taken the herds off somewhere to a, another area to, to feed the sheep. And they'd been gone for a while. So Jacob sent Joseph to go find out about them and see how they were. Well, so when he found them, they said, oh, no, here comes that dreamer. They they were really jealous. I mean, they oh, yeah. let this brew to the point where they were going to kill him and throw him yeah. in a pit. Yeah. And um, and one of his brothers, Reuben, said, oh, well, don't kill him. He's our brother. Just throw him in this pit and we'll leave. And whatever happens to him, of course, he was thinking he'd come back later and get him out of the yeah. pit. But. Anyway, so they threw him in the pit and they were eating and celebrating or whatever. And then here comes this uh, here comes this caravan of Ishmaelites yeah. on their way to Egypt. And, and Judah says, hey, you know, don't kill our let's not kill our brother. Let's just sell him as a slave <laughs> so his blood won't be on our hands. So they sold him as a slave. And I'm not going to get into the whole story, but while he was a slave, Joseph kept getting favor because oh, yeah. God kept blessing yeah. him everywhere he went with favor because he honored God and served God and was faithful to God no matter where he was. And so he was uh, the slave. He was a slave in Potiphar's house, a man named Potiphar, and um, Potiphar made him head over all his house. Yeah. And because he knew he could trust him and, and let him, but anyway, uh, Potiphar's wife, some of you know, the story lied about him. She tried to tempt Joseph to go to bed with her. Well, she, he wouldn't do it. No. And anyway, she told a lie to her husband. And so her husband got mad and threw him in prison. Yeah. Well, guess what? God had so much favor. Joseph had so much favor on his life and he kept serving God, even though he was in a prison. Oh yeah. And the jailer made, made Joseph the head of all the prison. Yeah. He didn't even have to worry about anything because Joseph left him in charge of everything. Well, as the years went by, um, I'm, I'm like I said, I'm not telling the whole story, but, but, um, Joseph, you know, he had had his own dreams here before years before, but he could also interpret other people's yeah. dreams. And there was a baker and a butler that were thrown in prison that were servants of, of uh, Pharaoh. And he interpreted both of their dreams yeah. and then both came to pass exactly what he had yeah. said. And so uh, one day, one day Pharaoh uh, had a dream, a real disturbing dream. And, and the butler uh, heard, of, you know, was there and hearing about Pharaoh, carrying on about it. And he said, I know someone that's in prison that can interpret dreams. Yeah. And so Joseph came and interpreted his dream. And what it amounted to, without me telling the whole dreams, you can go back right. and read that, like I told you, in Genesis chapters 37 and then 39 through 50. And so the God was telling Pharaoh that there was going to be seven years of plenty and then seven years of famine. And so God gave Joseph favor with Pharaoh, and then Pharaoh made him head over all of Egypt, except for only Pharaoh right. was higher than him. Yeah. So here's years later, he's managing all the abundant crops and storing the wheat so that people don't go hungry. And guess what? 
and where Jacob and his sons were, uh, there, the, there was famine there too. Oh, yeah. And they ran out of food. So they heard that Egypt had food. So they went there. And to make a long story short, they didn't recognize Joseph, no. but he knew them and he revealed himself to them. And well, you know, they kind of freaked out because oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> they're thinking about paybacks. Yeah, they're figuring, <laughs> oh no, we're in for it now, you know. And so let's let's read what happened here in Genesis chapter 45, verses four through eight. And Joseph said to his brothers, please come near me. So they came near. Then he said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into Egypt. But now do not therefore be grieved or angry with yourselves because you sold me here for God sent me before you to preserve life. Wow. Look at that. (laughs) For these two years, famine has been in the land, and there's still five years to which will be neither plowing or harvesting, and God sent me before you to preserve a posterity for you in the earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. Yeah. So now it was not you who sent me here, but God, and he's made me... father to Pharaoh and Lord over all his house and a ruler through all all the land of Egypt. Well, by the way, they were bowing before Joseph, just like his dreams years earlier, you know, had shown here they are bowing now before him. And then a little bit later, um, anyway, he ended up saving his entire family. They all moved to Egypt and they all had plenty to eat throughout the famine. And then Jacob died, the father, and his brothers started getting worried all over again oh, yeah. that Joseph was going to pay back time, you know, now that Jacob's dead. And so here in chapter 50, verse 20 and 21, it says, but as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good in order to bring it about as it is this day to save many people alive. Amen. You know, what you meant for evil, God turned to good. And how many times in our lives what the devil meant for evil and when our family members or someone else comes against us, how God turns it around for good. Amen. Remember the scripture, all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are the called according to his purpose. Now, therefore, do not be afraid. I will provide for you and your little ones. And he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. Wow. Look at that. Look what happened. You know, yeah, he could have got back with them, but that's he was the man of God. You know, he he had prayed and interceded for his brothers for years and God had turned things around and he ended up saving the whole nation. Yeah. of Israel that was to come, even the ones to come, because, you know, because of what happened, even though they meant it for evil, God used it for good. Yeah. God's plan. Yes. He used it to fulfill his plan. God is bigger. You know, uh, <coughs> no doubt Joseph probably felt forgotten a lot of times, you know. Yes. It always reminds me of uh, the lame man at the gate, beautiful. He was there day after day after day. And, and Jesus passed through that gate many, 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 many yes, times. Yes, he did. And I'm sure he saw the throngs and heard the, the crowds. And yet Jesus passed him by. It probably felt like Jesus had passed him by. But the but the lame man at the gate, beautiful, didn't know that a few years down the road, Peter and John would come and extend their hand and pull him up. And in the name of Jesus, he would be walking again. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm going to have to lay hands on somebody. Praise God. And as a result of that, 5,000 <laughs> men were saved that yes. day. Now, yes. That's not even counting women or children. Oh, thank you, know. you, Lord. So if you feel like God has forgotten you, welcome to God's master's plan. Amen. Because Amen. he's got something brewing. Yes. So no matter what you go through, you keep a good attitude and you keep your eyes on Jesus. And he's going to turn it around for his glory. Yeah. 
And in this case, he ended up saving all of his father's household all yeah. and, and their children and grandchildren. Yeah. Hallelujah. Jesus hasn't passed you by, guys. Amen. Amen. And he's working all things out together for your good. Yes. The plan he has for your life is coming together. Yes, it is. Hallelujah. You know, and um, well, I was going to read this, but I think I'll just tell about okay. it. And um, in the book of Acts in chapter 16, verses 30 and 31, there was a jailer, one that one that was instrumental in putting Paul and Silas in prison. Oh, yeah. You know, had them locked, chained up and everything. And I'm not that's another story for another time. But but um, they were worshiping God. Paul and Silas were and their God sent an earthquake. And all of the prison doors were open. All yeah. of the chains fell off. And the jailer um, was actually going to kill himself, you yeah. know, because that's a big lot of trouble. You know, he's in charge of that, that jail, that prison. And so um, he, he, they, Paul told him and said, oh, we're all here. Don't hurt yourself. And he turned around, the jailer turned around and said, what must, he got down on his knees and said, what must I do to be saved? Because he could see the power of God in, at Amen. work in this situation. And, and uh, Paul and Silas told him, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you and your whole household will be saved. Glory. And there's several times throughout the book of Acts, you know, where whole families were saved. Because one in the family believed. Man. And I want to encourage each and every one of you, your prayers for your family members are powerful. Don't depend on your own feelings and what your natural eyes see and yeah. what your ears hear. Yeah. Don't depend on that. You just trust in God. Yeah. You know, in, in uh, John chapter 15, verse 16, C, Jesus said that whatever you ask the father in my name, he will give it to you. Yeah. So your prayers, when you pray to the father in the name of Jesus, especially when you pray for your household, but you know, you can pray about others too, Oh yeah. but your prayers for your family are powerful, whether you think they are or not. Yeah. They are powerful. Don't give up. Don't give in. Give it all to him. There was an old song that said that. Don't give up. Don't give up on your family. Susie sounds like me now. <laughs> I've been around him for a few years. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you need to trust God that he is going to answer your prayers for your family and you keep living uprightly before them too, because your example speaks a lot. Yeah. You know, sometimes words, I mean, when you speak the word of God, it's powerful, of course, but sometimes actions really are stronger than words. When, when you can talk about Jesus all day long, but when your family members or coworkers see you going through a trial and keeping your head up and not cussing and throwing fits and trusting God, that yeah. speaks volumes to them. Oh, yeah. It's more than you know. More than Saint, you know. St. Francis of Assisi said, Preach the gospel and use words if necessary. That's right. Let That's, him see the light shining in your life. Guys. Yes, he did. He said that. You know, um, I've prayed for different family members and relatives for years and years. Oh, yeah. Same here. Same as all you guys <laughs> out there. <clears throat> and I want to tell you this story that I heard right after my dad passed away. I was wondering, I wasn't for sure he was saved yeah. when he died. But this is a story I heard on TV, and it was a true story. A preacher was sharing it on TV about this time. And uh, this what happened was one day this, this um, businessman was on a business trip, and he picked up a hitchhiker. Uh, it was a young college 
student, a young college man. And back in those days, I think it was even more prevalent to hitchhike than it is nowadays. Mm-hmm. Nowadays, it's so dangerous. Most people don't pick up anyone. Wow. But um, this was years ago. And this businessman's wife had been praying for him for years, yeah. for many, many years that he would get saved. Yeah. And so far, it hadn't happened, you know. Well, this businessman, the husband of this wife, this praying wife, was traveling on a business trip, picks up this young college student who, guess what, was a Christian. Yeah. And he was very bold for the Lord. And he started sharing about Jesus with this businessman. Amen. Well, this businessman pulls over and asks him what he needs to do to get saved. And so this young man leads him in a sinner's prayer and he yeah. gets saved. Well, the businessman dropped him off at wherever he was going that was on his way to where he was going. And he told the college student, he said, here's my business card. And he lived in a large city. I, I, I'm going to say it was New York City. I can't remember which city yeah. it was. But he said, if you're ever in my area, come look me up. And he yeah. said, well, I will certainly do that, sir. So years later, this young man had graduated from college and he he was in the business world and he was on a business trip to New York City. And he still had that card from years ago. It was yeah. all dog-eared and worn and all that oh, that yeah. he kept in his wallet. And he thought, you know what? I'm going to look him up. So he went to this man's office, this company that he owned, and uh, went inside. There was a receptionist sitting there, and he said, I would like to see uh, Mr. So-and-so. Yeah. And, and she said, well, just a minute. And she was gone for a few minutes and came back with this older woman. Yeah. And, and she said, uh, Mr. So-and-so was my husband, but he went on a business trip back in such and such and was in a bad wreck and died. Yeah. And, and he told him how he knew him. And then he talked to her and told him how he had led him to the Lord. Hallelujah. That woman started crying and crying and crying because she thought that her husband had died without Jesus. Yeah. And she backslid over it. She got mad at God, got upset with God. And she backslid because yeah. he didn't answer her prayer. And here she found out he did answer her oh, prayer. Yeah. You know, sometimes we don't know. We just have to trust that God did what we asked him to do. Sometimes we don't know someone's saved when they die that we've been praying for for years. You don't know the last second. Yeah, you don't know what happened those right before they died or as they were dying or whatever that they called on the name of Jesus. I've heard of many deathbed uh, confessions, you know. So this, so whenever I was um, worrying about whether or not my dad was saved, um, the story was on, on, on there. And you know what? God gave me several confirmations, but, but the most significant confirmation he gave me. Now, he may not always give you a confirmation, yeah. but he did me in this situation. Um, Soon after, within a year, within a couple of years after my dad passed away, I started dating this young man here beside me. I used to be younger. <laughs> we both did. And slimmer. <laughs> we both were. Had more hair. <laughs> but anyway, we were we were dating each other. We'd see each other every night, and um you know, he'd either drop me off over at my apartment and go home and, or, or I'd drop him off at his place and drive home. And he'd call me on the phone every time when I got home. Make sure she got home safely. (laughs) Well, this one particular night, it was my dad's birthday. And this came fresh in my mind, you know, about my dad and the dilemma, not knowing for sure whether or not he was saved. And on the way home, on that drive home, I cried out to God. I said, God, I just wish I knew for sure 
that my daddy was walking on streets of gold. And you have to understand, I don't usually say that prayers that way. I don't usually refer to heaven as streets of gold. Okay. As soon as I got home, I know sooner I got in my apartment and the phone was ringing. Of course, it was that'd be me, <laughs> brother Steve here. And I answered the phone, and this is what he said to me. As soon as I answered the phone, he said, "You know, I had a dream about your dad the other night, and he was walking on streets of gold." <laughs> The exact oh, language Lord, that I had asked God to oh. confirm it, he used. Yeah. And anyway, I have had no doubt in my mind since then. Amen. Hallelujah. He, he's walking the streets of gold. He is walking the streets of gold. Mm -hmm. And I believe many of our loved ones are because of our prayers. Even though we don't have that kind of confirmation with every one of them. You know, I was... I. I was blessed to be able to lead, lead my aunt to the Lord. Yeah. I was blessed to be able to um, talk to my uncle, you know, before he died. Yeah. I was blessed another one of my aunts, you know, to be able to ask her the last time I saw her. And then she died not too long after that. If she knew Jesus as her Lord and Savior. And she said, why? Yes, I do. You know, and so, so God has blessed me. So I know about some of them and some of them I don't know. But I have to trust that God loved them more than he loved me. I mean, not more than he loved me, but God loved them more than I loved them. That's what I meant to say. Sorry about that. God loves all of us the same. Yeah. He doesn't love me more than you or you more than me. He loves us all the same. I'm God's favorite son, and so are you. That's right. Susie's is God's favorite daughter, and so are you. Amen. It We're is, all his favorites. Yes, and the Bible says God's no respecter of person, so that's how Amen. I know that. But you know what? God answers your prayers. He answers my prayers. He answers yours. You pray to the Father in yeah. Jesus' name. If you're a born-again believer, you've asked Jesus to come in your heart and forgive you of your sins. You're a child of God. He answers your prayers. Yeah. Period. He does. He answers them. Yeah. Hallelujah. So sometimes we just have to trust God that he loved that person more than we do. And he's been faithfully dealing with them. And we don't know. But I know that when you pray for your family members, it is the most powerful prayers that you can it pray. It's more powerful than Susie and I praying for your family. It is. And and yes, we'll pray in agreement with you. We'll oh, yeah. pray yeah. anytime you ask us to. But your prayers for your own family are more powerful than our prayers for your family. Just uh, don't forget that. Hey man, we, I, I, I think of Cornelius. Yes. In his household, you know. Yeah, Cornelius was another one in the book of Acts yeah. that uh, was seeking the Lord. And he, he, you know, we won't, that's another story, but. That's another story. But man. he invited Peter to come to his house. He called all of his family members and all of his friends together yeah. to hear the message of salvation. And they all got they saved. All got saved. He all got saved. You know, one story I like story I like to tell is one about Jesus' brothers. <clears throat> you know, in one part of the Bible, you know, here they are mocking him. I think it's during the Feast of Tabernacles, I think. But they were they thought he'd gone off uh, the uh, deep end. Uh, yeah. <laughs> thought he was loopy and just crazy. <laughs> but you know what? I know Jesus prayed for his family, and I know he prayed for his brothers. Even though he did not see them saved when he was crucified, they got saved. After his resurrection. Yeah, you hear about him being in the upper room. You God know. heard. Hallelujah. Their, uh, uh, Jesus' <laughs> prayers. He, he was their brother. <clears throat> and, and God heard their, you know, Jesus prayed for his brother. Amen. And when we were about 33, 34, 35, on in there, we had a nursing home ministry. Uh, back in those days, we'd go to church every Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. And Sometimes Friday night. Oh, yeah. And if there happened to be a revival, well, yeah. we, we were there, you know. But anyway, uh, we had a nursing home ministry on Sunday afternoons in between church. I mean, you know, we were young. We we had plenty of energy back in those yeah, days. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Man, we'd go. Back then, I could kind of sing. I, 
he could sing very well. Well, that was back back then, maybe. <clears throat> anyway, uh, uh, those people would be so grateful that we were there. They they'd take our hands and just keep kissing it. I wouldn't, you know, be so spiritually proud. I'd pull my. I just let him because it it that's what you know. It, it brought joy to them. It brought joy to them, and and uh, we had this one man used to cuss us every Sunday. I mean, it really wasn't in his right mind, but yeah, he'd interrupt when Pastor Steve was preaching. Yeah, and anyway, one Sunday he was in his right mind, and we gave an altar call, and and he he received Jesus. Yes, he did as his Lord and Savior, and he kept saying, "Thank you." Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But what I'm trying to say is, guys, many of those people in those nursing homes had family members praying for their salvation, and, and their family may have never known that they were, their loved ones had gotten saved. But I just feel that I know that I know, and those people that have been praying for many of those see them in heaven, they're going to be overjoyed. No yes. One, that God yes. heard their prayers. Praise God. Oh, and, and God hears your yes, prayers. Yes, he does. And don't get upset when they revile you and speak evil oh, yeah, of you. Yeah, because yeah, look yeah, look yeah. at Joseph's brothers. Look at them. Yes. They're ready to kill them. <laughs> so they're at least send, send them into slavery. <laughs> we don't even know half the power of God. That's right. And not even a small fraction. Oh, man, I felt God on that. But because of Joseph's Ooh. obedience to God and faithfulness to God, and, and I know he prayer. prayed for his brothers too, he saved a whole lot of them, yeah. not just spiritually, but physically saved them from starvation Yeah, because of his faithfulness. And God had a plan, like we said, what they meant for evil, God used for his plan, you know, for good. Man, Hallelujah. Praise God. Guys, when we all get to heaven, we're going to be surprised on who we see there. Yes, we are. Because of your prayers. Yes. Don't you quit praying. I don't care if you think they are unsavable. <laughs> I know a God that can move mountains. And God knows just what needs to needs to be done to save them. It could be the last second, but fear not. Amen. In fact, get smooth out of the way and let God pass through. Amen. Fear not, little flock. It's the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That means more than you just going to heaven. <sighs> Amen. My, if God can set my hardcore alcoholic dad completely free of alcohol and save him to the uttermost, I know he can do the same for you. Uh, so what I'm trying to say is don't quit praying for your family, even though you might get mad at them. And you might get discouraged and you <laughs> might feel like giving up. You might feel like Jesus has passed you by, but God is working out his plan in your life, whether you can see it or not. Amen. And sometimes it ain't pretty. And Don't ask me why. I guess when we get to heaven, we'll know why. Amen. Glory. Amen. But God's good. Amen. All he, he loves your loved ones more than you do. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Did you have any? I think that's it. Well, guys, I think we're just going to shut or smooth down right there. I hope that we were able to bring some hope, maybe some encouragement. You know, hey, guys, Jesus is coming, man. Hey. Ooh. He's, just look at the world around you. He's coming. Yes. He's coming. Yes. He's All you coming. have to do is see the signs of the times. He's coming. And I'm going to rest in that. Amen. Well, guys, my wife and I love each of you dearly. And, and we both like to get on camera here and, and greet you guys from time to time. And hey, next time uh, we're thinking about a video, maybe we, <laughs> we'll get caught up and just visit, visit with you in person instead. We'll finish it in heaven. Hallelujah. Big, big. <laughs> did I say big? Big, big bear hugs waiting for you. <laughs> okay, guys, we're going to shut her down and see you next time. God bless God you. God bless you. We love you. And Maranatha. Maranatha.
all the brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that is, the word of faith which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Father, heal each one within the sound of our voice, God. Give them hope. Give them hope. Give them health. Give them healing. Give them your everything, Lord. Thank you, Thank you In Jesus', Jesus name. I love you. The Most High God knows every star by name. Amen. The billions upon billions upon billions of stars, He knows each one by name. He knows the number of hairs on your head. He knows what hurts you and has hurt you. He knows the sickness you're enduring. God is breaking in with breakthrough. The anointing of God is piercing through ooh, the darkness that has surrounded you. Reach out, receive it, claim it. God will make a way where there seems no way. Amen. God is going to make a way for you to come up and out of the pain that's been holding you down. I thank you that you touch everyone's body, everyone's mind, everyone's everything that's watching this this broadcast, Lord God. Touch them. Yes, heal them. Lord. Save them to the uttermost, Lord. Show yourself strong yes. in their lives. Yes. Show that God yes, is God. God. And he is well able. He is yes. more than able. So you just say a quick salvation prayer right now okay right repeat now. this prayer with us if you need jesus father in heaven thank you for sending your son jesus thank you. to pay the penalty of my sins by dying on the cross in my place thank you lord that he died on the cross but then the third day he rose again so that i can live a life of victory lord i ask you to be lord of my life and come into my heart thank you jesus amen thank you lord so if you prayed that prayer in faith, believing you're now a child of God. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Amen. Your, yeah. your past is past. Amen. Your sins are under the blood. They're behind you. And, and now the, walk forward in, in God. And the Most High wanted me to tell you, do not look behind you because you're not going that way. You keep moving forward. Keep your eyes on the prize which is before you. Amen. Thank you, Lord.